All right, so this is the lecture for the second uh, web design class. Uh, so again, you just uh, go to teachmecone.com, just teachmecone flywheelsites.com, and then uh, web design and web class two, and here we are. Okay. Okay, so here we are. Um, this is what we're going to cover today. Basically, HTML uh, links, uh, inline CSS, and CSS box and text properties. Okay, so. Uh, first things first, I'm just going to cover uh, HTML links. So we we did most of the way that you would create text. We pretty much did that, right? So the two main areas that you usually are going to find, um, the two other things that you really are going to need uh, besides uh, being able to put text into your HTML document is going to be able to put links in there, uh, meaning that you want to have a hyperlink that you click on something and it brings you to the next page, right? Uh, and the other thing would be to put images in there, right? So both of those, you're, you're linking um, something to the other thing. So uh, first thing I want to cover is the difference between an absolute URL and a relative URL, okay? Because that's what you use um, in order to, uh, in order to uh, connect to uh, something, okay? So an absolute URL is basically a URL that is the absolute address of something like it's the exact location specifically to this one specific place a relative url is relative to where you currently are located okay so the way to look at it is like this if let's say that um you have a neighbor that you really don't like right so if you were to say and he lives across the street from you so every morning you wake up and you take a poop on his lawn you don't like that neighbor all right well if someone asked you well where do you poop you would say well across the street that's relative to where you are but let's say you decide you can't take this guy anymore so you go move i don't know over to the next county over but you still hate your neighbor even though he's not your neighbor anymore well now if someone said hey where do you go poop you'd have to say well i go poop at this specific address you know on uh 3121 Butthole Lane, you know, uh, Northeast Maryland. You'd have to give them a specific address. But no matter where you were, whether you were in Kentucky or whether you're in Alaska, you could always say that's the address, right? But if you did an absolute URL, or, or if, you know, that would be relative, or I'm sorry, if you did a relative URL, that would mean that if you went to just poop across, you know, oh, across the street, well, that would be somewhere else. It wouldn't be that specific person so wherever you that was always relative to where you are and basically you do the same thing when you uh try to link something so i think probably the best way to do this is actually just to show you um visual studio code okay so i'm just going to use uh visual studio code like we did in class um and this is uh c sharp that's not really helpful for us uh, i'm going to pause it so right off the bat i'm just going to do a new uh a new file here so we're just gonna i'm just gonna use this one as the uh the example uh for the most part here and so the first thing we got to do is if you remember doc type uh html like so then we need to say and that says that it's html5 the next thing we need to do is html that's when the html document is going to start right and then we need to um, do the closing tag then we need to do the head all right, and head, and I'm just going to do a title real quick, title, and we'll say class uh, 02 examples, okay, title, and then after the head, I need to do the body, uh, body, and we'll just close the body here, all right, fabulous, okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to save this now. Um, for now on, whenever you're working, you're going to have to do the same structure, and I'm just going to do it real quick for you. You're going to have to have a master folder, and I'll explain in a second why, um, that you use, okay? So, uh, basically, I'm going to minimize this right now, and on your desktop, just make a new folder, right-click, new folder, and I'm just going to call this, um, uh, well, because your homework assignment's your bio, right? So, I'm going to call it cone bio. All right, so Cone Bio, I'm going to open that up. I'm just going to make it big so I don't see everything in here. Uh, so this will be um, 
my uh, site and then inside of here I'm gonna make another folder new folder I'm gonna call it images okay so all of my pictures are gonna go in this folder now I'm gonna go back here and now I'm gonna go ahead and save this so I'm gonna do file save as and I'm gonna save it to my cone oh, look at cone biography cone bio I'm going to save it right underneath it, not in the images folder. It's going to be right next to it, okay? So, remember, I made that folder called Cone Bio. That's going to be my site, okay? I'm using air quotes right now. Um, but that's going to be my actual, like, site. Everything's going to fit in it. All my HTML documents and all my pictures and everything go right inside of it. And if you remember, so I'm going to do HTML, and we're going to call this one Index. Index, okay? And you'll see it will automatically solve all those issues. Yay, hooray, that's all working good. Let's get rid of this. Okay. Um, and actually, this is probably a little bit small for you. Let me make that bigger. Sorry about that. Okay, so we got the body. So what I want to do is I just want to link a picture to it, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you basically uh, two ways of doing this, all right? Um, I'm going to first link... Uh, uh, don't worry about doing this with me. I'm just going to do it so you can see it. So image, src, source, and then... Um, I'm going to go to, oh gosh, um, hang on a second, I got to get the exact address. All right, sorry, there might be a little bit of a disruption here because my thing crashed the uh, the screen recorder. Anyway, um, so I need to put the uh, the URL. So what I want to show you is this. I'm going to do an absolute one first, just so you get kind of the idea. Uh, if you look, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to link uh, this picture here, okay? So you can see my cone bio is in a totally different, like, folder outside of it. It's not next to it. It's in a different location on my computer. So I want you to see what you have to type. Don't do this because it's not going to work on yours anyway. So file slash slash uh, c uh, upper slash forward slash users forward slash co forward slash desk top forward slash frontal dot png all right and i'm not gonna worry about the rest of that like that now if i save that and i open up my thing and it went over here but you see the picture shows up okay um and you can even see up here it kind of has the uh the URL, right? So this is a URL. This is an absolute one. All right. Now, uh, you can see that this is looking specifically at the the C drive, right? The user, notch cone, uh, desktop, frontal. Uh, this is the actual file, okay? But it has to go all the way. Like if you just opened up my computer, this is the direct path. It didn't matter where you were on my computer. This is absolutely where it would be, okay? Now, to do a relative URL is going to be a lot cleaner. And the problem is too, so this would work no matter where I put this file, but if I were to upload this onto the internet, this would obviously that's inevitably the point, right? I got to upload it to a server. This URL will no longer work because that computer, that server would have to have access to my computer and it wouldn't because it'd be on a different computer. This is only going to work on my computer and only if that picture is directly there. So if I were to move that picture right now, uh, this won't work anymore, okay? So this is an absolute URL. And anytime that you go on the internet, anytime you type in something here, like if I go, you know, Google, that's an absolute URL. Uh, you can't really see the full length of it, but that's an absolute URL because it's, no matter what computer I'm on, I always want that to be the same spot, right? I want that address. I want to know, like, if someone needs to know where I live, I don't have to say, oh, you know, I'm this to you, like, because, you know, if you live wherever, I would say, okay, well, you're going to want to take a left and go right and do this and whatever, you know, relative to where you are. But I could tell you that, hey, I live at this street address. But then I could tell another person, I live at this street address and another person. Otherwise, I'd have to give each one of them a different relative path to where I am. So absolute URLs are good for, like, finding a website, but it's not good for in the website. What you want to do instead is this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that picture, okay, so I'm going to take this, I'm just going to copy it right here, and I'm going to paste it into my images folder, okay? And this is what you should do with all of your images that are going to go into your site for your homework. They're always going to go into that images folder that's right next door to your index. 
So to, to grab that is much easier. So uh, I'm just going to remove this because I don't want to do that anyway. All I got to do is images. You can see it actually pops up. Frontal. And that's it. And now when I save this and open this up, it works just the same. Okay. Um, and the reason why is that what it's doing is it's I'm in the index and it goes, okay, uh, it's going to look for an images folder. There's the images folder. And then it's going to look for that image. And that's it. It's a lot more simple. And if I were to move this folder, put this folder, let's say uh, this cone bio onto a server, it will work regardless because this won't have to look for my computer. It will just look next door every time. Okay. So that's the difference between a, an absolute and a relative URL uh, and the longest uh, form that I could possibly think to explain it. All right. Um, but it's kind of important. You just want to make sure that you're always using a relative URL that it always looks like this. If you have a bunch of stuff, then your um, then you're not doing then your things not set up correctly. OK, so it should be relatively simple. Uh, and that's it. All right. Uh, so going back to this guy. Uh, so an absolute URL, obviously, like I said, it goes to that. A relative goes to that. Now, these are the different ways that you would write them. So if it's in the same folder. So if I had the image and it existed, uh, where are you at? Let's just do this again. Let's say I take this image. I'm just going to cut it. Don't do this. This is what you should do. If it was right here, I would write it like this. I wouldn't need the images folder section. I would just need frontal because it's right next door. Uh, it's right. You know, I, mean, I can look at them and see them. Um, let's leave that like it was. And then if I'm not going to bother saving and stuff. Uh, and then uh, if you want to do a folder below, you would do, you know, the folder name and then the image. A folder above would be this dash dash forward slash and then. So basically, uh, we're imagining that we're in this thing. So if I want to get to this picture, I would do dash dash boom and then the name of it. Um, or I'm sorry, dot dot uh, forward slash and then this. Uh, if I want to get this, it would be the name of the folder forward slash then the image. If I want to go farther down, it would be, uh, you know, folder slash blah, blah, blah. And then again, the folder slash, and that's how I get to it. So uh, this is how you get to it. But honestly, you should never need to go more than one below. It's, it's not generally a good idea to go up. Okay. So most of the time, all you're ever going to use is this, this and this one. Okay. All right. So images, uh, the next bit here. So basically we have, um, Rasters versus vectors. Okay, so uh, a raster images are images that are made up of pixels. I should have some visualizations. That's pretty bad. Sorry. Uh, are images that are made up of pixels. Uh, what that means is that every picture you see, um, I can't really zoom into this in any. Oh, you know what? I'm going to pause and open up a picture inside of uh, uh, Photoshop. Okay. Uh, so here we have a picture. This is a raster image. Most of the images that you see are on your computer are going to be raster images. Most of the ones that you interact with are so photos and things like that. But the basic idea is this, is that if I were to zoom into this picture. Oh, not there. <laughs> if I were to zoom in this picture, let's say my face, uh, you can actually physically see um, that it's made up of pixels, picture elements. OK, so it's a bunch of dots. And depending on the number of dots determines the resolution of the image. All right. So um, and that's basically a raster image. That's how that works. Now, on the opposite end of this, you could have something that is a let's do nothing for this. That is a, um, a vector image. So I could draw something like this, this circle here. OK, and let me just get a little closer. OK, I don't know why that did that. Control plus. OK, uh, you can see it looks like this. But watch when I make it bigger. Oops. Okay. Well, we made it really big. Um, you can see still a perfect line. Okay. That is a vector image and I can make it infinitely small too. We'll make it a little bit smaller. Um, but basically the idea here is that this is actually made up of dots, these vectors. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I don't care. Uh, into these vectors. Okay. So it's made up of, because a vector, right, is an X, Y, Z location. So it's basically like a polygon. Um, in this case, these are Bezier curves, but this is a, this is a vector graphic. All right. Now it's good for, um, graphics, you know, logos, uh, whole colors and things like that. You'll see these like on billboards and, and that sort of thing. Um, but this is a vector graphic. We're not generally going to use these. Uh, you'll pretty much just use raster graphics, but that is, uh, what the difference is. Okay. 
Now, um, there are three uh, vac uh, raster images that you would use, right? Um, that you're going to see on the internet. And if you go on the internet and you download any pictures, you probably have already seen these. Uh, the first one that's probably the most common is a JPEG. And basically, JPEG stands for Joint Photography Experts Group. It's really good for colorful photos. If you take a picture with your phone, or even if you have a fancy camera, the default that's going to use is going to be JPEG. So if you were to look at your, your images in there, they're going to be JPEG images. Um, unless you use Camera Raw if you have a fancy camera. Uh, but that's typically the default that you're going to see. The reason for it is because... It can handle a wide range of colors. It has good uh, control of gradients and things like that, but it's relatively compressed, which means the images aren't large. Uh, they're relatively small. So on the Internet, that's particularly important in order for stuff to open up quickly, right? You have to download all the pictures that you look at on the Internet. Uh, JPEGs are relatively small. So if you're just doing a straight-up, regular kind of photo of something, JPEG's the way to go. Uh, the next one are GIFs. Uh, I know some people say GIF, Graphic Interchange Format. Uh, basically, it's a really low resolution image. Um, it's only like 256 colors. Um, uh, it's really good if you're going to be doing something that's going to be graphic in nature where it's just solid colors because it doesn't have a lot of range of color. So if you have like if you do a gradient from like red to black where it just blends from red all the way to black, you will see each step of the red getting darker. So GIFs aren't very good for doing like actual photos. It's going to look really weird. Um, but if you're doing like whole logos or things like that, uh, wallpapers, you know, uh, very solid things with definitive edges, it will work well for that. Um, another thing that it does that JPEG doesn't is that you can have alpha, which means that you can have parts of the image be transparent. So for instance, let me scroll up here, like here, you see these here, see how like this is a picture, right? But see how you can see the background. There's no white. It doesn't have a white square around it. It has a transparency around it. It allows you to see through parts of it okay so that could be a gif uh thing the only problem is it's only 100 percent, which means it's either you can see through it or you can't so this is uh an example of you can see it 100 percent, but it's not semi-transparent the other thing that gifs do uh is that it makes those stupid animated things so you probably have seen animated gifs where like the baby dancing or the diet or the the alien dancing or whatever it lo looks like a picture it's really crappy looking but it's animated I mean, there's even apps like Jiffy or whatever on your on your phone. That's a GIF, okay? So uh, um, it's kind of a specific need. They're also very, very small. This is smaller than JPEG would be, but it's the quality's not as good. So unless you need something like animated, which still the quality's not that great, uh, or you're doing something like a logo, you're probably not going to use GIF. Now, a PNG was meant to replace the GIF, okay? So portable network graphics. See how this is graphic interchange format? Uh, this was meant for the internet. It's basically kind of like the, if the two of these had a baby, this is kind of what would happen. All right. So um, the quality and stuff is comparable to a JPEG. Uh, it has, has the full range, uh, really nice color. Um, it's relatively small. Uh, it also supports alpha, right? So it has transparency, but you can't, you can do not just a hundred percent, you know, there and a hundred percent not there. You can do like 50% there. So you can have a gradient of not um, being visible. Um, which is really awesome. So example of that is if I scroll all the way down here on the tutorials, because he's, oh, come on, get all the way down. You see how like this color here, see how it fades off into transparent? Like you couldn't do that with a GIF, but you could do that with a PNG. All right, go back up here. Where are you at? Okay. Um, this is the newest of the formats, although it's not that, old. I mean, it's not that new anymore, but, um, I use this for a lot of things, even besides the internet. So, uh, if you're kind of like not sure, just do a PNG. Um, but PNGs are pretty good. And the only thing it doesn't have, which I kind of wish it did, is it does not support animation like GIFs do, which is sort of disappointing. All right. So um, these are basically, if you're going to use an image in your uh, website, they have to either have an extension, meaning like picture.jpg or picture.gif or picture.png. It can't be a PSD. It can't be a bitmap or TIFF or whatever. It has to be one of these three, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and we will cover, let me see something real quick. Uh, yeah. Well, what time is it? All right. Um, okay. So next thing to do basically is cover the actual application of it. I'm going to stop this video here and then, um, I will start another video to, uh, basically where you can kind of follow along if you want, or you can just watch where I'm just going to show you how to, um, insert images into your site.